Hey everybody, it's Kurt here at Petland Norwin and today we are going to be talking about hamsters and why they might be a great pet for you. So whenever you're considering getting a hamster, uh, one of the first things that you're going to think about is what kind of hamster you want. So there's over 20 different species of hamster. Uh, we carry four um, different hamsters here in our pet store, um, which are going to be the most popular of the different varieties you can choose from. Um, we're going to start just by showing you the hamsters and then we'll go over some basic care for them and um, we'll mix in some fun facts as we go. So it is nighttime here in the pet store, so as you can see the hamsters are all awake and very active as they are nocturnal, which means that they are they sleep during the day and they're awake at night. Um, one of the main reasons that they're nocturnal is they have really poor eyesight. Hamsters typically can't see past the tip of their nose, so they really rely on their whiskers. I don't know if you can get a close-up of their whiskers um, to navigate, um, but they have super sensitive whiskers, so they're all running in on their wheel. We have three exercise wheels in here, um, but they're definitely having some fun right now. Um, these are the Syrian hamsters. This is the largest variety hamster that we offer here, and then they obviously come in different coat styles, um, fur styles, and colors. So on here we have a black bear, which is a panda bear variation. The, pa the panda bears are black and white. Um, this is probably a teddy bear variety, so it'll get longer hair as he grows up. Um, this is a Dalmatian here variety. Um, a lot of these kinds are just called golden. They're, they're just called a golden hamster. Um, again, these guys are pretty close to full grown. Here's some smaller ones. Um, it's, it's important to note that while we keep our hamsters uh, communal living here, meaning multiple hamsters in one habitat, when they go home, they cannot be kept together. So whenever you're thinking about getting a hamster, you're never going to purchase more than one hamster. You're going to get just one hamster. They can get very territorial as they grow up and reach maturity. So we never ever sell a hamster. Um, that's not gonna have its own habitat and enclosure to live. They might be able to have interactions with each other, but those would have to be closely monitored. Again, while they're so young here, they don't have time to really set up territories or get territorial, and that's why we're able to keep so many. Um, important, to, um, whenever you're going to handle a hamster, because their eyesight's so poor, you need to really be careful and not reach in to grab them. Um, again, they are very low on the food chain, so they're, they, you know, they're very skeptical of predators. And whenever you're reaching a hand in rapidly and grabbing them, that could be, re you know, received as a threat. They could think it's a bird of prey trying to grab them or something. So we always try to recommend. I know I'm going to take you off the wheel, buddy. Two hands underneath of them, and again, see if they get used to you. He's smelling me right now. But this is going to be the appropriate way, and you're always going to want to be low to the ground or sitting in the ground in a safe spot. So if you're doing. Um, outside of their cage, interactions with them, maybe uh, purchasing a play mat for them so that they can run around on the play mat. Um, so they're very, very active at night. The hamster can run the equivalent to a human marathon in hamster steps, so 26.2 miles um, in one night. Now it doesn't mean they go 26.2 miles, but if you measured stride for stride, a hamster can run up to 26.2 miles in one night. Um, they have some different different obstacles in here. So this is just your, your typical wheel. Then we have these flying saucers, which they get on, which are really cool, is they spin like this. Um, and, and again, we don't um, do a lot of the steel, the metal grates because their feet can get caught in them. Um, so you can see multiple <laughs> are running on there. Um, moving on. Oh, so a note, note to whenever you're picking out a hamster. These guys are really easily handleable and they get more docile as they get older. So if you're looking for a hamster you can take out and interact with often, the Syrian hamster is gonna be a great option for you. Moving right down the row, we have the Roboborski hamster. These guys are the fastest of all of the hamster species that there are. They're extremely active. Um, but because of how fast they are, they can be really hard to catch. So we don't recommend these for, for children that want to be able to get their hamster out and interact with them because they're just too hard to handle. Nobody's sleeping in there. They're all sleeping in here. So again, they're extremely fast. Which I, So if you're looking for a hamster, you can handle the... See how fast they are? The Robo is probably not going to be the best, but they're one of the most active busybody hamsters that there are. So if it's a if it's an animal that you want to build a really awesome enclosure for, set up a really awesome habitat, and see them move around, run around, run through tubes, um, they're going to be the most active and probably the most entertaining. 
So immediately you can tell the difference between the Syrians that we started with and the Robos. Uh, it's going to be a completely different pet, even though it's the same pet, right? So if you're thinking about getting a hamster, this is a huge consideration. Um, whether you're going to get something like a Syrian or a Robo, or we'll move right on to our next species, which I like to say is like an in-between. We're going to go to the Russians, which I know we don't have many right now. Um, the Russian dwarfs. Uh, these guys here are active, but they stay small. So they're going to be much smaller than a Syrian. They're active, but they're not nearly as active as the Robos. Uh, they, some the really cool fact about these guys is like their scientific names, like a Jung Jungarian hamster. Uh, and they're snow Jungarians, so they're from Russia, and in the winter their coats will actually turn white. Now we don't always see that translate in captivity as they've been domesticated and they're not going to go through a winter here, but because they live outside, it's important that their fur matches the color of their the scenery that they're in to protect themselves from predators. So you can see this guy's completely gray, so he'd be able to blend in with foliage and, and um, you know, the forest. But in the winter, if he was running on top of snow, um, any bird or any predator would be able to see him extremely easy on top of snow. So you can see this guy in the back here. He's uh, He does have some white in him. And every once in a while, even in the pet store, we'll see hamsters that actually will start to turn completely white during the winter. But again, it's pretty rare that we see this um, whenever they're in, in captivity like that. And then moving on to the last uh, species that we offer here. This is the Chinese dwarf hamster. These are the most laid back. Oh, is this my only little friend? <laughs> These are the most laid back of all the hamsters. Um, they're going to be the least active. They don't even really get on the wheel and run. Um, they are also not really good movers in a hamster ball. So we don't even recommend a hamster ball with these guys a lot of times. So again, I'm not, I don't want to scoop them up and we don't ever want to do something to make them uncomfortable so letting him sniff me see if maybe he wants to come up this is my only guy in here everybody all your friends must have found homes so they're typically really really great to just hold um but because it's nighttime and he's super active i'm not going to bother him more than than i already am by you know forcing him to be held by me um but they're going to be the most laid back. I know I keep saying that, but they just don't do a whole lot. They probably need less space than the other species of hamsters. Uh, this is a really great beginner hamster because of how calm they are. Now, this guy's making me look like a liar because he's running around like crazy. But again, because they're nocturnal, they're extremely active at night. So he is going into his hive, um, which we're going to go over some basic care uh, and we're going to go through some supplies in the store. So this is one of the things we'll talk about with that. Uh, something else really neat, I don't know if we can pop back over to the Syrian hamsters, is they hoard food like crazy. So they're scavengers, and they can actually fill their cheeks up with food. I know this guy's in his food dish, and they will store a multitude of seeds in their in their cheeks. So, I know he doesn't, his cheeks are empty. Every once in a while you'll see this hamster that just looks like he has the biggest, fattest cheeks, and it just is all food sitting in there. It's actually amazing how much they can, um, they can hold in there. I don't want to, I don't want to offend them too much by going in there. So, um, kind of just letting them be. So we'll uh, pop over and talk about some basic care things. So the first thing, whenever you, after you've picked out your hamster, whether it's a Syrian, a Russian, a Robo, or a Chinese dwarf, the next thing is, is how you're going to house them. So this is going to be one of the most important things that you're going to purchase is going to be their cage or their enclosure. So, um, you can either offer the standard like uh, plastic critter trail cages are super popular, or you can set up a tank. So a lot of people will opt to do like a 20 gallon long fish tank. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit harder to keep fresh airflow in there. So they need good airflow and good air quality. Uh, so the cages offer that benefit in that they're all open on all sides where the glass tanks are obviously glass all the way up. So you can't get a really deep tank um, that's not gonna offer good airflow for the hamster. But I always like to tell people, when it comes to hamsters, the more space, the better, whether you're getting the Syrian, the Robo, or even the Chinese dwarf, it's not as active. They are still scavengers, and being that they're nocturnal, and keeping in mind that we talked about them running a marathon each night, the more space they have and the more things they have to interact with, the better. So you can do your basic starter kits, right? And then they sell a ton of tube and attachments. Uh, it's also really important that they have a wheel to run on. And again, we mentioned over there, we like the plastic wheels much better that don't have the slats in them. Um, 
We actually discontinued even selling the wire wheels here, but these wheels here provide them with, with something to grip when they're running. Um, and then, like I said, you saw those flying saucers and they make them in different sizes. Um, and then we have like the silent spinners, but they don't have openings where the hamster's feet can get caught in them. But that's gonna be a great way to provide them exercise. And then some of these cages, and we really like, is that some of them will have like the hide boxes on them. So you can see these guys have the boxes. This triple play has this lookout up here. Hamsters are burrowing and a nesting animal. So if you give them that enclosed space that's in some of these cages, they're actually gonna build their nest up there in that, and that's gonna provide them a safe place. Um, which leads me, we talked about the hides. So hamsters definitely need a hide to stay under. Um, and we sell those in here separately, uh, but also sometimes the cages will just offer them in them, okay? So they always need a hide. Again, that's gonna what is gonna give them that feeling of protection. So something as basic as this, or you can do the wood huts if you have a bigger enclosure. Okay, and we have some of those in there too. Uh, what's really nice about the wood ones is that the hamsters, it gives them something to chew on too. So fun fact about hamsters is their teeth never stop growing. So because they never stop growing, they have to have things to chew on in their cage. I had a, a friend in, in high school that would always tell me, my hamster kept me up all night. I would wake up and I'd roll over in bed and I'd look at him. There he was, gnawing on his cage. And he's like, you know, the hamster's gnawing on the cage to actually grind down their teeth, okay? And if they don't have something to chew on that's going to grind down their teeth, their teeth can actually overlap and then they'll be able to, they're unable to eat food if that happens. So whether they're chewing on their cage or chewing on their, hot, their hides or their huts, um, or they're gonna be chewing on chew treats or chew toys. So it's important that you're gonna offer your hamster several different types of toys. One of my favorite toys that, that we sell, and this is pretty much for any small animal, are these kebabs. And the reason, whoa, whoa. The reason being the kebab is they're refillable. So as your hamster eats his little carrot and then his little eggplant and then his strawberry, okay? And this is empty and you see it's empty, it triggers in your brain. So it's a reminder to you that your hamster needs a new chew toy. Now, again, whenever we talked about more, more is really always better with hamsters. They're being, I know I keep repeating, they're scavengers. So giving them, these are, you know, mineral chews. Um, these are wood loofahs. These are all things that are gonna stimulate. These are, these are fun because they're a little bit of like a nesting toy as well. So they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna rip this apart and they're gonna take it up and they're gonna hide it in their nest. So there's a ton of different options for them. You know, here's another, another type of nesting toy, right? This is just some sisal. These are wrapped paper, but inside's a, a, a block that's gonna help wear, wear down their teeth. So this is gonna really take care of both maintenance of your hamster and behavioral needs. So whenever we talk about sending any animal home, we wanna make sure we meet their four basic needs, which is environmental, nutritional, maintenance, and behavioral. behavioral. So um, environmental is gonna be their cage. Um, behavioral is going to be that chew toy or your your wheel for them to run on for the exercise that also goes hand in hand with maintenance actually one of the big things that affects hamsters is obesity uh, i know it's, it sounds funny to think that it, you know you can have an obese hamster but if you're not providing them with exercise options or mental stimulation and they're bored and they're sleeping in their cage and especially sleeping overnight they're going to get obese so giving them all of the, the needs that, um, of the, the behavioral needs is also gonna help with the maintenance, the, the teeth maintenance, the weight maintenance. Um, nutritional is obviously food and treats. Um, water bottle or water bowl. The only problem with water bowls is, is a lot of times they're going to put bedding and stuff bedding in. So if you're gonna offer your hamster a water bottle instead of, or a water bowl instead of a bottle, you have to really be on top making sure it's clean. If you're doing a tank over a cage, they make these water bottle holders that will actually attach to the side of the glass and then they hold your bottle in place in there uh, so that they don't fall over. You can see we have these pedestals. You could also do something like this. We have these pedestals that are built out of PVC and you can see even though this is high density, you know, plastic, the hamsters are still chewing on this even though we're offering them different toys weekly, <laughs> probably daily because mm. the employees love to. <laughs> Absolutely. They love to give them toys every Spoiled. day. Spoiled. comes in. One of the, these are really popular. This is like a treat and and a chew. These um, rice pops. This is one of our best-selling best-selling treats and toys for hamsters. Mm -hmm. um, 
again, this is just, it's, it's mental stimulation. I know it's hard because like sometimes we don't think about hamsters like, in the same way as we think about dogs or cats, but it doesn't mean that they're not an animal that have needs that need to be met. So again, just something as simple as this little ball, the hamsters, you know, they can play with it. They're going to want to chew it out. Um, they really have unique little personalities. Once you get them home, you can get to know them. And it's important, we have all of our petters open in the store. It's important to come in and interact and see if you're creating a bond. You might come in dead set on a robo hamster because you've watched YouTube videos with funny robo hamsters running around like nut jobs. And if you come in and you can't form a bond with a robo hamster, you might fall in love with a Syrian hamster that's showing you a little bit more of his personality. They're definitely all listening to us right now. I don't know if this, I don't know, did I mention their scent glands that they use? No. So hamsters, because of their poor eyesight, they also use scent glands um, if, in their tail area that actually leaves a scent trail for them. So if they ever are out of their cage, they actually will follow that scent gland back because their eyesight's so poor. Those are definitely, in my opinion, the cutest. But, you know, everybody has favorites. So, uh, treats. It's important, you know, you can definitely spoil your hamster with treats. Yogurt drops are one of the most popular things that hamsters are gonna respond to with you. Um, but you never wanna overdo it with them. So a lot of the treats are gonna be similar to their seed mix. These are super cute because they're ice cream cones, but you can just leave this in the cage with them. But it's important you're offering them all, as well a high, a high quality diet. Um, Oxbow is a really awesome brand. It's all Timothy based, which is a good, good treat for your hamster. Um, moving forward we got the food aisle right so you got a ton of different seed mixes um we recommend oxbow food but we also mix seed in with it the oxbow is here is my oxbow hamster food out out of stock bum 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 so let obviously it's out because we recommend it so much but it's completely edible whereas the seeds and stuff they're going to crack and they're going to leave the shell behind um the oxbow is just a little bit more nutritional uh, and then another thing to consider is what type of bedding. Um, almost all hamster beddings are gonna be paper-based. And again, this is gonna help with reduced odor control. Um, they do sell scented bedding. I think we don't really offer much scented bedding anymore. It's not super great for the hamsters because they have such heightened senses and rely on it. It's not always great to offer a scented bedding for them, but some people will mix it in with a typical bedding for it. So it helps absorb the odor. Um, but they're going to be paper-based. Again, they can use this for nesting, burrowing. They're going to fill their tubes with it. Um, we do sell pine bedding here, but I don't recommend pine bedding. It is dusty. It can lead to upper respiratory infections and eye infections. Um, our, the bedding we're using is uh, the Fresh World bedding, which is like a recycled deuce paper bedding. Um, it's super, super absorbent, and it really does keep down on the smell. Um, one of the main concerns people have when they're purchasing a hamster is, is do they stink? And they can actually be potty trained. Um, they kind of will teach themselves. If you give them an area um, and they sell an attachment, and again, I'm hoping we have it. Yes, we do. So they actually sell hamster potty and training litter. Um, and this, some hamsters will use it, some will not. Everybody has different luck, but that will help that definitely cut down on smell. But if you're keeping, they're typically gonna pick a corner just like a, a, some other small animals or cats use a litter box, they typically pick a corner and go from there. So sometimes if you can match that up into the corner of the cage that they're going to the bathroom in, that's gonna be your best option for getting them potty trained. Um, Bathing. Bath powder. Yeah, so they can do dry baths. Um, very popular for chinchillas, but we sell hamster bath, bath powder as well in little houses. So this will actually cut down on smell and odor as well. And it's good for their skin and coat. Um, all of the cages definitely, they come standard with a plastic bowl, but we definitely recommend upgrading to ceramic because that can't be chewed. And even though it's not going to hurt them if they're chewing plastic in their cage, if you're not trying to, you know, the plastic, once they start chewing it, it's much harder to disinfect and clean. Uh, so the ceramics are really easy to clean. Uh, these cages are all super, super easy to clean because the cage part pops right off. The tubes all come undone. And whenever it comes to cleaning a cage, guys, they sell cleaning products, cage cleaning products, which absolutely can be used, especially for spot cleaning. But one of the most effective things is gonna be hot, soapy water, Dawn dish soap. Um, 
And then hamster balls. Uh, we talked about exercise outside the cage. Hamster balls can be a really great way for your, ha your pet hamster to get safe time outside of their cage, especially if you have other animals. I know sometimes people don't like hamster balls. If you're, you know, you're being diligent and you're using the ball for a lot of periods of time, it's an effective way to keep your hamster from becoming obese. They do like getting out and exercising. Recommend doing a light colored ball instead. That will help with the eyesight. It also helps keep heat down inside the, inside the ball. But it's gonna be really important that even sometimes when you're running the hamster in the ball for just a short period of time, because they use scent glands to find their way back home, um, you do have to clean the ball often. So you can't just take your hamster out, put it in the ball for hours on end. You need to come back and clean it intermittently during that time. But it is a safe way, especially if you have a young child um, and this is their first pet, the hamster ball is a great way for them to get exercise outside of their cage in a safe way. If you just think you're gonna let your hamster run around your living room, it's probably never coming back. Um, we see them get lost in couches. We see them get lost in nooks and crannies. They can squeeze themselves under doors, guys. They can flatten themselves to less than a half of an inch. So that space you think they can't get, they can get. And that's why we do recommend hamster balls for safe exercise. And if you're trying to clean the cage, having a safe place to put them, or if you've got you know, a third grader at home that wants to take her hamster outside the cage, this is a great way for them to interact with the hamster. We sell tracks as well, so you can actually put them on a track if you don't want them rolling. So it's important to note when you're putting them in a hamster ball, if you have stairs in your house, we do not want the hamster going down the steps, right? So it's important if you, you know, if that's not an option that you don't have a gate or you don't have a door to shut for the steps, that the track's gonna be a good option for you because it's gonna keep the hamster safe from going downstairs. So you really have to think it through um, before you start offering all the different options and that's why we're hoping to make this video for you. Um, so if you're you know, considering them as a pet, they make a great pet, they make a great starter pet. Um, they can teach responsibility, but we always note to parents, you know, you cannot buy a hamster thinking it's your kid's sole responsibility to take care of the animal. Um, I have kids myself. We all know that as a parent, you're going to end up being the one that cleans the hamster cage and takes care of it. Your, your kid can still enjoy and bring so much enjoyment. I remember hamster was one of my first pets. It brought me, you know, probably was one of the starts to my love for animals, was having a hamster, being able to interact with them. We used to use VHS tapes to set up mazes. Um, so there's, I, I still, make mazes with my with my daughter now we use magnet towels I, we have a video on here actually of a magnet towel you know track that we were running the hamster through as a maze so there's a lot of different fun things and you can make it a fun family activity a group activity playing with them um so it's not a pet like i said that isn't going to bring joy but again when it comes to the care we always say like you don't buy it you don't buy any pet for any child thinking Oh, this is my kid's pet. They're going to do all of the work because you've heard that a hundred times. Um, I don't think, I don't think I missed anything really, no, right? No, nope, so I think you did if good. I missed something guys, and I might have because we did this as pretty much a single take video, um, you can drop questions in the comment section. We're uh, pretty good about answering those. Uh, if you're from the area, stop in, talk to one of our employees. Uh, if you have a local pet store, they should have, they, they got to, somebody is passionate about hamsters in the pet store. Uh, so get, find that person. It's so important. You can find that single employee. You know, we have some employees here. Everybody loves animals that works here, but we have some employees that just, they love hamsters. So you find that employee, they're going to give you the most, you know, the most information. They're going to provide you, the, you know, what, what's going to bring you the most enjoyment out of your pet. So, um, Good luck if you're considering a hamster for a new pet. We hope you find the perfect one. Life expectancy is two to three years, by the way. I guess we didn't uh, we didn't cover that. So that's about one of the biggest downsides to a hamster, right, is the shorter life expectancy. Um, but obviously, you can see, especially at nighttime, these guys are super, super fun. So thanks for watching. And again, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments.